Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Earthbound. Last time we made it through the cave right before Giant Step, before we've been blocked by this strange, shiny, star-like thing. I'm not entirely sure. It's also worth mentioning, uh, just very slightly stronger since the last time we left off, since I had to walk back out of the cave and back in in order to save and reload for this week. So we're up to level 11. I got 105 HP. I'm probably a little too strong for this, to be honest. Uh, you need to be maybe about 90 HP is a good place to be. That's probably about level 9. But, uh, you know, can't hurt to be a little bit extra strong. So let's go ahead and check this thing out. So we have to take it from him if we dare. Well, we do, so let's get to it. So this is our first sanctuary boss, the Titanic Ant. It also might be easy to miss the two black Antoids in the back row here. So uh, a couple things with this guy. We're gonna bring along the yo-yo for this because he has the ability to generate a physical shield which will have damage from our T-ball bat. So the yo-yo will actually be able to break through this shield. However, it's a little weaker and can't get critical hits otherwise. So we're gonna leave it off until we need it. We're also going to be uh, going into our PP pool pretty heavily here. Gonna be using PSI Rockin' as much as we can. You can see it uses 10, so we can only do it three times before we run out. This guy also has the ability to drain PP from us. So there's his shield, which means we're gonna need to switch over to the yo-yo as soon as we start doing our physical attacks. Uh, if we get there, we might be able to finish it off with these PSI Rockin's if he doesn't take any of our psychic points. All right, so we've done about 100. That one was about 80. It was a little bit weak. Oh, wow, that hurts. That's why you need to be a little bit careful. That smash hit can take off to about 60 HP worth of damage, which is why 90 is a good figure to go with. So uh, we're gonna, thankfully he didn't smash again, otherwise I would have been in some real trouble. Uh, but we're able to life up there and we'll be able, we'll be able to do one more PSI rockin' and uh, that will deplete our psychic pool. So we finished him off. Thankfully, it looks like three of those attacks took him down, so we managed to get by without having to use any physical attacks, but again, if he has that shield off, you want to be using yo-yo. Uh, he's also got a couple other things. I think he can use defense down, which is basically a waste of a turn, so you don't really need to worry about that. But now that he's down, we can go through the cave behind him, and well, this is a giant step, so I guess we should check it out. So we get a bit of a melody, and we've also caught a glimpse of a small, cute puppy. Aw, oh, well, isn't that the sweetest thing? Okay, so our soundstone recorded its memory, and that is the first one down. Of course, we don't have the soundstone with us, but, you know, the game still progresses normally, like I said before. So now that we've uh, picked up that melody, we've accomplished all we set out to do here, now we have to walk all the way back. That's kind of the downside. The good news is, though, like I mentioned before, once you defeat the boss of an area, all the enemies will run away from you, so this is a perfect opportunity to either avoid them all together or get a little bit of extra experience if you need that sort of thing. So with that automatic defeat, we can head back, and uh, I believe we're... I'm not too interested in leveling up. Like I said, I'm already pretty strong for where I'm supposed to be, so I'm pretty much just going to make a beeline right back there, and I will meet you once we have reached the entrance. All right, so we've now reached the entrance to the cave and a cop is here to greet us at the end, telling us the sign said, do not enter. And, well, yeah, we could read it. Yeah, we just didn't want to, you know, I and mean, we got things to do. So he tells us we're gonna have to go to the uh, Onet police station later. Thankfully, he doesn't take us there himself, so that gives us time to make some preparations and, well, I guess skip town. But <laughs> uh, unfortunately, the road to the next town is blocked until you do this, so, you know, you kind of have to either way. So as we head back into town, we don't really have too much else to do here. Once we stop by the police station and finish what needs to be done there, we'll be able to head on to the next town and consequently the next section of the game. So before we do that, though, I'm going to stop by the drugstore, a couple things to sell. I'll probably sell the yo-yo and I'll sell that travel charm we picked up a little while ago. So let's go ahead and take care of that. Okay, so cleared up just a couple of spaces there. Sold pretty much what I said I would. Also withdrawn some money in order to get us to $500, so that'll come in use. It's worth keeping money in the bank if you're not really sure of uh, yourself out in combat, because I believe if you die, it takes half the money you have on you, but any money that's in the ATM will remain safe. 
So, you know, if you want to not carry too much on you, it might not be a bad idea, but if you don't plan on dying, I guess it doesn't really matter. So the police station over is over here in the southeastern corner of the area, just east of the bakery, which is east of the arcade, so pretty simple to find, of course, if you have the town map, that helps as well. There's a couple guys around here. This guy, uh, he's a little bit long-winded, so I warned you before we got into this. It's gonna lecture us, blah, 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 blah. It's usually those tax evaders who, blah, 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 tax evasion, we know. Like I said, Nee goes on for a little while. And there we go, we're finally done. And we can also uh, talk to this guy over here. This is Captain Strong. He's pretty much the leader of the police force. So we need to talk to him in order to continue. So playing Nintendo games. Well, uh, playing a Nintendo game of you playing a Nintendo game. That'd be a little strange. But yeah, we need to go to Tucson. So he's going to tell us to follow him, and of course we oblige. Man, this room doesn't look good. <laughs> it's an empty room with six cops in it. I'm not sure what's going on. But thankfully, Strong's going to explain. We need to get past five of his best men. They're playing a little bit nasty here. But thankfully, they at least have the decency to come at us one by one. And this little boss intro thing plays, but you don't need to be too concerned about that. These cops are actually not that bad at all. They're regular enemy caliber. A couple bashes will take care of them. Unfortunately, smash hits happen, and uh, we missed, so we're getting a little bit unlucky. Uh, I guess to sort of balance off some of the fights we've been having lately. All right, I need to heal. Uh, <laughs> you need to heal if you get below about 40 with these guys. Uh, thankfully, he missed with his crushing chop, so we can max out our HP. And bash him a couple more times. Let's take a little bit longer than I anticipated, but there we go. So, the cops are usually easier than that battle made them look. Uh, you can usually take them out in two turns, so let's see if we can get a little bit better luck with these next few. There we go. That's better luck, wouldn't you say? That crushing chop is the stronger of their two attack variations. And we got a hamburger for that as well, so I think we've got like six now. We can <laughs> pretty much recover as much as we need. Bring it on, fat boy. Oh, man. I didn't know this was going to be so personal. I thought that was just kind of a test thing. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm not crushing chop. I guess we should probably heal this turn. I'm almost bashed instead. Usually don't have to heal this much, but well, I guess that's how it goes sometimes. And left us another hamburger. I guess they're feeling bad for us, but we also leveled up. Good luck, maximum HP by two. And we also realized Shield Alpha, so there's our, uh, I think that's our first defensive type spell. And next time he's gonna take us out with this nuclear suplex. Well, maybe you should have pulled that out this time, buddy. Okay, so this is the fourth cop. There's another one after this, but we're not going to be fighting the next one in line. So it's pretty important that uh, before you finish this guy off, you uh, top your health off as much as you possibly can. So we'll get out of life up here. Unfortunately, take a little bit more damage, but we managed to take him out right after that. So, you know, it's worth filling up as much as you can before you finish that battle. So the fifth guy walks up to us and says, you can forget about me, I'm going to call for my boss. And that means we're going to be facing Captain Strong himself. He says there's no way he can beat us, so he's going to get ready for his Super Ultra Mambo Tango Foxtrot Martial Arts. Well, all right, we'll see how that works. Okay, so this is Captain Strong. He's not that bad. Uh, he has one attack. He has the submission hold that can deal quite a lot of damage to you, so you want to heal anytime you get below 80 to 90-ish. Probably a safe range for this. Uh, otherwise, we can bash. It's not worth wasting too much PP on trying to use PSI Rockin'. He can also uh, upgrade his offense, and um, yeah, coming out swinging is kind of his basic attack. I'm gonna heal here. Yeah, there's a submission hold. See, that deals quite a lot of damage. I don't know if that can smash or not, but if it can, that would be, uh, yeah, pretty rough. As you can see, we're already taking quite a lot, so. You may have to heal a lot during this battle. Sometimes you'll get lucky and he'll just go on guard, uh, giving you a free shot. There we go, got a nice shot in at the end and that finished him off, so. It's not too hard as long as you're smart about it. 
And again, it kind of says a little bit of something about this police force. I mean, sure, I guess he's this special chosen psychic child, but you did just get beat up by like a 13-year-old with a t-ball bat, so <laughs> I don't really know. So he's going to radio ahead to the guys blocking the road to Tucson, tell us that we're going to be there in a few minutes, and that they're going to open the road for us. They were probably complaining that they were ruining their world record or something. Alright, so he wishes us good luck. Says he wants to see us again after the way we've been treated here by the police force. I'm not sure we want to come back, but we'll keep it in mind. There's a couple jail cells around here. Got some funny dialogue. Hey, I'm in here. Go and find another can. No. <laughs> Tell you what, man. These criminals in this town, even they have the sense of humor, right? Alright, so let's head back out. This pretty much finishes our... Uh, tasks in Onet. Now that the road to Tucson is available to us, obviously that's where we're going to uh, need to be going now. Of course, if you need to heal, we can stop by the arcade, or we could catch this magic butterfly. I eh, know, I've got more PP that needs recovered than that, so I'll just heal here with Frank. All right, and now we are ready. Unfortunately, we've got a lot of hamburgers, probably more than I want, in fact because we're going to need some a few inventory spots coming up in the next area, but, you know, I guess I'll eat them when the uh, time is appropriate. All right, so at this point, these are the guys who are blocking off the road. I guess we can talk to them, see what they have to say. Take care of yourself. All right, well, that's nice and polite. You're doing well. Keep it up. Well, thank you for the encouragement. And he's going to give us a few other tips, town map and stuff, which we already know about, of course. Alright, so yeah, you can see there's some more enemies, but again, they're running away from us, so you don't have to fight them if you don't want to. There's this house over here, might be worth checking out. Uh, there's these mice in here with arrows over their heads, like they're holding some kind of sign or something. So these guys are known as exit mice. And basically what these guys will do is if you're inside of a dungeon, you can use them as an item in order to just make your way out without having to walk. So ask if we want to take them. Of course, we don't have the inventory space, but they're not really that useful right now anyway, so uh, we're just going to hold off. Oh, look at all these guys. Probably attack slugs. Okay, here's a new enemy. I'd rather not fight him just yet, though. Let's see if I can scroll him off screen. Nope, still there. Move a little further back. Still there. Okay, well, I guess we can just go for it then. So this guy's the Ramblin' Evil Mushroom. His big deal is that he scatters spores, and I believe this is the first opportunity you have in the game to encounter the Feeling Strange status, which is basically like confusion. He usually scatters spores just about first thing. Uh, we may be able to finish him off before we get afflicted by it, though. Looks like we did. Uh, but of course, you know, I will show getting hit by it as well, because it does some interesting things in the actual overworld map as well. So, we got a gift here. I don't think it's anything too useful, but, you know, I'll use a hamburger because we have so many. Let's get a little recovery there. Oh, it's another hamburger. All right, well, that works. So, there's another mushroom here. We can avoid this guy by using the tree as cover. Oh, man. <laughs> wow, that guy totally snuck up on me. That was really good, actually. All right, so we're almost definitely going to get mushroomized here. Oh, maybe not. Wow, good smash. Save the day. So let's keep heading down the path, ignoring that other guy. You can also find them on the other side of this forest. Uh, thankfully, there's no intermediate screen, though, so we're actually automatically into the next area. This is the outskirts of the next town. So, uh, of course, I do, like I said, want to get hit by one of those mushroom guys, so I'm going to see if I can get into battle with one here real quick. All right, so we scattered some spores. It almost always works. We begin to feel strange. So while we're in battle, what this does is it'll sometimes randomize the target of your attacks. Uh, if it does have its effect, it'll say Nessa's feeling a little strange, I believe. That's the first line in its text box. Otherwise, you can still have a chance of attacking normally. And look, we got a mushroom on our head. Man, check that out. <laughs> a pretty nice visual indicator of your status. Uh, this also has a secondary effect, which is a little bit harder to describe in words. It's one of those things that really only affects the person playing the game, but uh, if you see me take a weird turn at a random time uh, here in the next little bit, I will explain what's going on. So this is Tucson. We can go ahead and check out the map here if we want. It's quite large. There's a nice little park there in the bottom, which is its main attraction. 
But uh, we're actually going to stop by the hospital, which is over here, uh, kind of at the end of the road. Uh, is it up? I believe it's up. Nope, oh, there we go. Saw that weird turn. So at this point, I am pressing down. Now I'm pressing right. Now I'm pressing left. <laughs> it's actually rotated your controls 90 degrees, which is a little bit strange. It does this at random intervals. So it's worth getting that thing uh, off your head as soon as possible. Thankfully, you can do it over here with this blue guy. And he notices the mushroom on our head. He'll actually buy it from us for $50, so I don't know. I guess if you want to make a little money, you could just do this over and over, but uh, no, there's a better way to do that. So now that we're healed, let's go ahead and head back out and start actually exploring Tucson for once. So let's head back to the entrance. There's a couple places over there we want to check out. I'm going to have to go down from here, actually. I don't know if I can get through the buildings. Oh, check that guy out. Nice convertible. Oh, there he is again. Oh, man. Okay, so the first place we want to check out is the cycle shop here. And when we do, you know what this means by now for sure. Yeah, we get a photo right here in front of the cycle shop, so it's worth stopping by. So let's go ahead and check this place out. We can get an item here. Obviously, it's going to be a bicycle. You know, took a lot of brains to figure that one out. Uh, we can talk to this guy. It's the cycle shop Punk Shore. So like puncture? That's, oh, that's a pretty bad pun, actually. So yeah, we want a bicycle, but unfortunately, they don't have any for sale. They only have rentals. So yeah, I guess we can rent one, sure. We can borrow one for free. We have too many items, of course. Uh, because we store our bike in our backpack, of all things. So let's just eat a hamburger in front of this guy, and then we can get the uh, bike again here. Okay, so that gives us the bicycle item. Uh, unfortunately, this item is really not that useful at all, basically because of the restrictions he's going to list. Two people can't ride on the bicycle, so of course three or four can't ride on it either. We can't ride on a bike with anything following us. We can't have teddy bears, can't carry anything, don't ride bikes into caves. Basically, it's only when you have Ness by himself that you can use this bicycle. If you have party members, you can't. Uh, if you've got a teddy bear, which we'll see a few of them later uh, following you, you can't. So you also can't ride it into caves or anything. So it's if you're alone as Ness in town, but we have that situation right now. So let's check it out. Nice, and the music changes and we're going automatically here. I'm not actually hitting anything. You just kind of change direction. And you can also tell as he rides towards you, look how happy he is. You know, I guess it's worth making the guy feel good, so. All right, so let's head on down here if we can, there we go, right down the road, check that out. Nice little screen, nice little uh, view there, isn't it? So let's go ahead and we can hop off at any time by pressing A. That's pretty much the only time you're gonna see the bicycle, sorry to say. This right here is Berglund Park, one of the biggest markets you'll ever find. Nice. So Berglund Park is a little bit of a shady name, but a lot of vendors around here. You can buy some various stuff, so that's pretty cool. Uh, let's see. The first thing we want to do, we're going to have to clear out quite a lot of inventory space. We're going to be selling a few burgers first thing. All right, so I've sold a few burgers to open up some spots. We're going to buy something from this guy. Uh, really, the only thing we want at this point is the copper bracelet. You can see it's fairly expensive, so you do need a good amount of money. But if you've been fighting things along the way, that shouldn't be an issue. So I can go ahead and buy the crop copper bracelet. That'll increase our defense by five more. And we can sell the cheap bracelet back. And no, that's all we need from him. There's a couple other things we can get. Let's talk to this guy here. He owns an antique shop, but unfortunately no one's buying or selling anything. So he's just going to sell the for sale sign that sits in front of him. For $98. Yeah, sure, why not? We can use a sign, I guess. Alright, so we'll see that item a little bit later. It's also worth mentioning, let's go ahead and buy something from this guy, I believe. Yeah, he sells seasonings that you can add to your foods. So let's go ahead and he's going to explain them just a little bit. But basically, these things are sort of add-ons to the food items that you can eat. For example, uh, I believe the ketchup packet would work with a hamburger, for example, and it would increase its healing strength. So. These aren't really worth carrying around because you could use this inventory slot for just another healing item. But we are going to buy a ketchup packet for something you'll see later. So it's going to be it. I think we've got one more slot left. So let's talk to this guy here. He sells fresh eggs. Okay. So it's 12 big ones for an egg. Let's go ahead and get one. 
And uh, these eggs are actually a very, very good money-making system. We have only one slot on our inventory, but you know, if you had more, you could fill this thing up with fresh eggs. And basically what happens with this is while you have it in your inventory and you're out in the world, if you wait for a little while, you'll eventually start hearing this little chirping sound. You may not know what it is at first, but if you check out your inventory, the egg has now turned into a chick. Huh. It hatched while I was sitting there in our pocket. That's kind of cute, actually. Well, while we've got it here, let's wait just a little bit longer. Whoa. <laughs> Some kind of 8-bit sound coming out of our pockets. Let's check it again. Oh, it's actually matured into a chicken. And at this point, we can take it to a merchant. And if we say we want to sell, we can say to sell the chicken. And believe it or not, we get $110 for this chicken. Remember, we bought the egg originally for 12. So that's quite a profit you're gonna make off of these. So if you want, you can just fill your inventory up with eggs, wait a while. It takes about a minute and a half, I think, uh, is about the time it takes to complete the entire process. But you know, if you've got an entire inventory full of those things, you can make quite a bit of money in a relatively short amount of time. But not really that interested. I've got enough money to uh, do me for a while, so we're just gonna leave it be at that. We can also head over to the left here. Okay, this guy wants to lock horns with us. All right, this is Everdread. You don't actually have to fight him right now, I don't think, but uh, this guy's kind of a semi-important minor character we're gonna be seeing throughout the story, so it's worth introducing him now. First thing we're gonna do is put up a shield because that'll help deflect his uh, normal attacks a little bit. Of course, when he misses, that's also nice as well. Otherwise, we can just uh, go ahead and do our regular attacks. And he can also steal items, which is kind of annoying. He can also knit his brow or knit its brow. Kind of a weird thing because that attack is normally used for an animal later on, but... <laughs> Basically, we can just sit here and keep bashing. He's not really that tough. He's just standing there. Wow, look at that. That's like four times in a row. So yeah, smash that dude and turn him back to normal. You also get a fair amount of experience from that, so I would recommend fighting him at this point. Unfortunately, we're not really getting any big vitality increases, so our HP isn't going up a whole lot. Oh, oh that sucks. So he's gonna say we're pretty strong, you know, kind of an instant respect sort of thing. And he knows that we want to find out about Paula. Of course, we've heard that name before. She went to a secret hideout in the Peaceful Rest Valley, but a chubby boy and a weird guy in a blue outfit have kidnapped her. Human sacrifice? Wow, okay. Uh, that, that's a little over the top. Yeah, hardcore strange. I think that's fair to say. All right, so it tells us once we save Paula to come back, that's all we get to do with Everdread for right now, so... Hmm, that's... <laughs> okay, well, I guess in a manner of speaking, we learned where we need to go. Paula was heading out to uh, some secret hideout, but got kidnapped by a chubby boy. What? How many chubby boys do we know? Nah, I'm sure it can't be anyone we know, right? And uh, some weird guy in a blue outfit. Of course, this is all stuff we'll learn about later. So uh, at this point, so let's go ahead and head back up. We can check out the hotel. Uh, it's also worth mentioning that there is a department store here. And uh, it's relatively large, as you can see. It's got multiple floors, just not really anything that I'm gonna worry about buying in here, though. But it's, there's nice little escalators you can ride on and stuff, so, you know, might be kind of nice, I guess, but... If I remember correctly, most of the stuff in here is a little bit, like, out of our league at this point. Like, a little bit too expensive, maybe. All I really remember is I never bought much from here at this point. You don't really need to. It's kind of better to just save your money for stuff later on, especially once we get our next party member. Let's go ahead and check out the hotel. This is the first one of these we've been in. They all have this uh, little snappy music you hear. I can like it quite a lot. ATM in the closet for some reason. I don't know why it couldn't just be out in the lobby. We are going to withdraw some money. We've got quite a lot. Yeah, we've got a thousand just in the bank. So let's go ahead and bring us up. And yeah, we'll get a few hundred. Okay, and uh, let's see. First things first, let's go ahead and we can use the phone here. This is the free variety of phone. You know, because you can just walk into hotels and use their phones. It's pretty nice. Of course, it only costs like a dollar at the department store, so it's not like it really matters. Just whatever's closer. Let's go ahead and call Escargo Express. We can check this out. 
And thankfully, even though Tracy does have our soundstone, we can still call her on the phone and do this without having to worry about her giving it back to us. So they're going to send someone over, but in the meantime, we have kind of free reign to move around. Let's go ahead and head over here into this lobby area. There's this dude in a suit over here. We could talk to him, bug him a bit. What? <laughs> Sorry, I can't speak. Oh, hello. <laughs> There's the Escargo Express guy. All right. I guess we can do that now. I didn't think it would come in here. So unfortunately, they charge $18 for their services, but, you know, I guess it's not too bad. You can store things anywhere you are, so it's pretty useful. Let's go ahead and store the bicycle, because like I said, we're not going to be using it anymore. I'm also going to store this for sale sign. Uh, I was going to show it off, but I don't really have anything to sell right now, so... At this point, he could take one more thing, but there's really nothing else I want to store, so... He's going to confirm our request. That's right. We pay the man his money, and off he goes. Now let's continue bugging this guy. I, I know, I'd imagine, man. <laughs> Dang me. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you. Later days, but <laughs> he's just saying random things now. Now, is it? It rocks. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Is it cold? No, you just said it was hot. Well, which is it? <laughs> so eventually, once you bug him enough, he'll just say, get yourself a juice or something, and he actually gives you 50 bucks. So, hey, what do you know? Next time you're in a hotel, you see a guy wearing a suit just sitting alone at a table somewhere, keep bugging him. If you talk to him enough, he'll give you money. It works every time, I promise. So now we have learned where we need to go. Thanks to our conversation with Everdread, we can take a look at our map. We can see Threed is actually down below us, but that is, of course, inaccessible right now. So we need to be heading off to that little dirt path to the right. Before we go down there, though, let's see if I can uh, find the correct people to talk to. I think they are going to be down here by where we need to go. And there's a couple other places we want to check out, just kind of for story purposes. Yeah, these two down here are worth talking to. They talk about kid inventors. You can see there's a sign for Orange Kid actually right below us. This is not that airheaded dweeby apple kid talking about the incredibly hot Orange Kid. All right. <laughs> Always ask me for something to eat. Invent some food. You know that's not how it works, right, lady? So yeah, there's kind of a couple competing inventors down here, the Orange Kid and the Apple Kid. You can probably guess by the dialogue that we're supposed to kind of go with the, you know, unlovable, slobby type one because, well, that's just what type of game this is. But before we uh, go check that out, we can talk to the kids around here. Paula's not here. She left. We know where she went, though. So this is actually the Polestar Preschool. This is the place where uh, Paula and her family live. And there's all these kids around. So apparently she's pretty well liked around these parts. I like this kid here. You may not be able to comprehend my emotions. I might have a baby face, but I possess the mind of an adult. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Could you imagine a little preschooler talking that way? This is actually Paula's mom here. Yeah, so even though she's uh, pretty young, just like Ness is, you know, they kind of realize that she's got something special going on about her. And can kind of take care of herself. This is her dad in here. She kind of, she's kind of like her manager, I guess. Um, many people come here to see her powers, but they're just leeches. No, we're not from a TV station. Oh, well, what do you know? <laughs> you can already tell. Yeah, we're Ness. That's, that's who we want to be. Save the world, huh? So, yeah, apparently she's got some kind of insider knowledge as well. You know, Buzz Buzz told us some similar stuff. Unfortunately, uh, her parents seem to be the last one to realize that she's not actually here. Everyone else knows. But uh, even though he tells us to come back later, we can still go up into her room, and it's worth doing. Um, uh, actually, I don't really want to do this right now. We'll do that later, because we're going to have to make a couple trips kind of out into the next area. I'd rather do it the second time through. But we will come back later. For now, though, this is uh, the Polestar Preschool, so... You know, we kind of got a little picture of Paula painted in our heads from the various uh, dialogue around here. It's also a pizza place. I guess we can check this out. But yeah, you can tell she's pretty well-liked, and of course everyone kind of realizes she's special, and uh, I guess sort of prophesied that we would come visit her, so 
you know, we definitely need to meet this chick. Unfortunately, they don't actually sell pizza at the pizza store, but they will give us their number. There we go. We can now call them at any time to deliver a pizza. Uh, the pizza healing items are actually not that bad, but they do take a few minutes to get there, so I wouldn't rely on them if you really uh, need some healing. We can also stop by. I want to make sure you got some money. You also want to make sure you have a food item that you're not uh, too concerned about giving up. So let's go ahead and talk to Apple Kid. We'll check out Orange Kid later, but you know, it's pretty obvious that we need to be dealing with him first. Uh, this is also the greatest introduction. I'm Apple Kid. I haven't taken a bath in quite a while, so I may be kind of stinky. Okay, well, thanks, thanks for telling me, buddy. Do you have something to eat? Um, sure. Here, how about a ketchup packet? Cool, that works. Just eat it right out of the package, yum. Invest some money in my inventions. Um, okay. I could really use $200. Uh, is this for your invention or... All right, sure, I've got a lot. All right, so, well, apparently we're now business partners with Apple Kid. That went kind of fast. Didn't sign a contract or anything, but okay. Also, this mouse is blocking the door. He's going to give us something. It's going to give us a receiver phone. This is another key item that's going to have to be in your inventory at all times, so... Hope you got a slot for it, because <laughs> your space has been even more limited. With the ATM card, the town map, which to be fair, you could deposit if you wanted. You know, all your equipment, plus now the receiver phone. So our inventory's been basically, like, cut in half, just about. And of course, Orange Kid is up here if we want to talk to him as well. Oh, well, that's good. It would really help us in Peaceful Rest Valley. Okay. Um, you know what? Sure, why not? We got money to s spread around. Sure, let's give them 200 bucks. On all mankind. Wow, that's... <laughs> so he's got a super orange machine. He calls it Suporma. Okay. So now we have the Suporma. Please use it for spreading peace and goodwill on Earth. Man, this is really as good as you say it is. I gotta check this out. Let's see, uh, let's go ahead and see what the description on this thing is. Orange Kid's full name is the Super... Okay, well, that's all it... Okay, we have no idea what it does. I'm not sure when we should use that. Maybe we'll know when the time is right. So at this point, actually, this is the road that leads to three. Yeah, because we're actually off the map at this point. So we're going to have to head back up. It looks like we could get to three at this point, but we actually can. I think there's one per... stop over here the bus station yeah he's thinking about catching a bus to three but there are ghosts along the way the bus will have to turn around and come back so it's kind of a strange thing but we'll get into that a little bit more three's got its own stuff going on we've kind of got more important business first so we're pretty much right here at the road ready to head to peaceful rest valley in search for paula but i believe we are going to uh, cut it off right here it looks like a pretty good place to stop so next time we will head into Peaceful Rest Valley and see if we can meet up with Paula. Till then, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.